would be fun to show you a little bit of what I'm eating from the garden at the moment and take you along for a week of garden chores and other bits and pieces as well. You might have heard me mention in other videos but this year I've been doing a challenge to try and eat something from the garden every single day of the year. It could be anything, it could be just a herb or something to put in your tea or it could be lots of things if that's what you've got and it's going really well especially now you know it's June and the garden is starting to really give us a lot and I thought it would be nice to just show you some of the stuff that we're eating and show you how what we eat has changed as well because it definitely has from doing this challenge and that was part of the point of it. So here we are this is breakfast day one Monday and I would say that breakfast is probably the meal that I have changed the least and has the most possibilities of changing more as we get more things out of our garden, as we get eggs and things like that. I've always just had a slice of toast for breakfast. I find it really hard to change that. I don't buy bread anymore, um, but what I do do instead is make a sourdough pancake. It's basically just a sourdough starter mix. I top it up with a bit of extra flour and water just to bulk it out, spoon a few spoons of it into a pan and make a pancake directly from it. It's just as quick as toasting toast, um, which I also used to do in the pan. Um, so to my mind, it's literally just the same as taking a slice of bread out of a packet of bread and toasting it. But a lot healthier and a lot tastier, I think, than normal packaged bread. And yeah, I usually have that with some tomatoes, some olive oil, maybe some basil if we've got it. So usually I go around the garden at least once a day, usually while I'm watering, with this little notebook and I take notes on anything that I notice that I think I just need to change or fix or work on or do. Things that are ready to be harvested, things that look like they're not doing so well in a certain position. Or observations really, just to make note of what is happening at different times of the year. And if there's stuff that I need to do, I try and do those over the next few days. There's one thing that I've noticed that I really want to fix today, and that is this bed here. This is a bed that I made slightly differently to the other beds. Usually I do a layer of compost, then a layer of cardboard, then a layer of thick straw. On this bed I just put a layer of compost and then black plastic as the weed barrier to kind of smother the grass and the weeds that were growing there. Once that had all died down I planted into it and that was working really well for the first few weeks. We had a lot of rain and then the first couple of weeks after that every time I had a look at the soil under the black plastic it seemed to be really wet, there were loads of worms near the surface, um, all the dead grass and stuff that was growing here was getting broken down and I was really happy with it. In the last week or so I've noticed that the soil actually is just getting absolutely baked under the black plastic which is really not surprising, it's been very hot, um, I don't know what I was expecting with leaving black plastic out in the sun like that and that's not good, um, the soil life will just die if it gets too hot, all the good bacteria and stuff that live in that soil are not going to be able to stand those hot temperatures. The soil's going to die, basically. And I think that's what's happening. So I've taken the black plastic off. And I'm going to try and just cover this bed with straw. I need to border it somehow, which is a bit of a pain because either I have to go and get loads of rocks or I don't know what else. I haven't got anything else to use, really. But I think the main thing, at least, is just covering it with straw, which will be much better at keeping the ground cooler, uh, protecting it from the sun and retaining water, so we're going to do that. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day I'm trying to make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out Gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my this is actually my first time growing tomatoes and I don't know much about it but what I do know is that, that I want to be picking the um, flowers off the smaller plants so that they put more energy into growing upwards and outwards and not into early fruit production. I'm also just picking off any of these shoots that are coming out in the middle of the stem under main branch. I obviously don't know the technical words for any of this. Um, there's probably a word for this as well. 
So yeah, I'm just picking these little shoots off that are coming out the middle. This is what I was taught to do and right now I cannot remember why. <laughs> I'll have a quick look and I'll put it on the screen. Some of these plants are looking a little bit water stressed. I mean it is the middle of the day so that's not fully surprising but they were looking like this early in the morning as well and I think that's because I just couldn't get enough water to them with the black plastic around the roots. I was going with a watering can and watering up around the root but I don't know I probably wasn't giving them enough and that was a lot of work with the watering can trying to point it in the little hole in the black plastic. So with this bed mulched hopefully I can just come with the hose and just wet everything and it'll stay nice and damp under this thick layer of straw. I'm gonna let the sun shine in today And I will leave my windows open so that I can as you can see I did border it with bricks in the end I thought I just yeah I don't want all the straw to blow away and I did want it to look nice I do think that as well as being practical it's really important that a space that you're going to be working in a lot and putting in a lot of intensive time into just feels nice to be in and is attractive by your standards so I do like to see the beds with some sort of a border and to that end as well I've also been experimenting with how much work it would be to actually fill all the paths with cardboard and wood chip and have nice wood chip paths like we do in the top garden. We do have a free source of wood chip which is really good but it is definitely going to be a lot of work to lay all the cardboard down, move the borders that I've already done to put the cardboard underneath and wood chip everywhere but I really do think it could be worth it because it is so nice to walk down the wood chip paths and it just makes such a difference. And I really do want this small section of garden. It's not going to extend any further than these three rows of beds. I really do want it to be a place that I just love being and I love walking around and I love spending time in. I don't want the path to always be getting overgrown and be annoying to walk through, scratchy, um, or always having to be coming down trying to strim in the paths, which is a bit tricky because they're a bit narrow and the strimmer doesn't really fit. So although it is a lot of work, I think it is something I might try and do slowly over the next year or so. Anyway this bed is looking a lot better. I think after lunch I'm going to do this bed of, um, well there's nothing in it really, just a few cucumbers at the end but I think I will do this bed as well so I can plant that up at some point. One thing that is doing surprisingly well at the moment is lettuce leaves and salad leaves in general. We've got rocket that's doing really well, although it is going to seed, so it's probably not going to last all that much longer. So I'm going to have to eat it all up now, which is fine because rocket is amazing. We've got, well, we've always got, you know, leaves of things like chard and beetroot and cabbage leaves, kale, things like that. There's always, always leaves that I can find um, from that sort of stuff. But lettuce as well is doing really well for us at the moment. I've got a lot to eat. I've got this little bed here which is growing really well in the shade. Um, and I've also for some reason planted like 40 lettuces in this bed that I cleared a little while ago. It was a bed right in front of the house and it does get a fair bit of shade. So I thought if I'm going to plant lettuces anywhere, I'll plant them in this bed. So I cleared it and I planted all my lettuces there. They're doing really well actually possibly use a little bit more shade so I'm going to plant some uh, climbing beans over them hopefully and try and make a sort of shade structure with the beans but yeah we have a lot of lettuce which is great like ideally I would eat lettuce with every meal and I do at the moment now that we've got it it's something that I never really used to buy that much from the shop because it always just seems a bit lackluster and limp and also quite expensive for what you actually get which is usually just a small little handful of leaves so really having our own that just you know it's going to be a challenge to get through it all is just such a sign of like abundance for me it's uh yeah i think it's one of the best things that we're getting out of the garden at the moment and one of the things that really makes me happiest so here we go this is my lunch Salad, mostly from the garden, um, some kidney beans, not from the garden, from a tin, 
We've got an avocado, also not from the garden. And we've got a few pickled radishes in this salad, which some friends gave us in exchange for our pickled radish seed pods. So these are really tasty. But yeah, very simple lunch, um, refreshing, which is what I need in this heat and very quick to throw together. Just looking around at what we can have for dinner and as usual there's lots of leaves. I've got a purple broccoli leaf and a bit of kale. I've got some more kale in the fridge. And I think we're also going to have this broccoli. It is a broccoli, a purple broccoli. It looks a bit like a cauliflower but it is in fact a broccoli. There we go. Ah, oh, it's so good this stuff. I'm also just grabbing some spring garlic to pop into a bit of like a refried beans type dish since I opened that packet of kidney beans um, this morning. I probably need to stop pulling up this, <laughs> this garlic if I want to actually have a crop to dry. Um, but it's just so nice like this, I just can't resist it. So here we go, this is a pretty typical evening meal for us. It's just a big bowl of vegetables with maybe some beans, in this case, like refried kidney beans, and usually some kind of carbohydrate like rice or potatoes, although I've just realized this dinner doesn't have a carbohydrate component. But never mind, it's just got a really simple tahini and lemon sauce on the vegetables and the salad. And yeah, this is a pretty typical thing that we will eat um, <laughs> many times a week. So excited about this broccoli. Mmm, the beans are good. Ah, oh, that broccoli is so good. It's really good. I need to, I need to grow so much more of that broccoli. Mm -hmm. It's so good. <laughs> it's really nice. Mm. I haven't got much planned in the garden today. I'm just going to finish bordering this bed, which has the cucumbers in it. I ran out of bricks yesterday, so I had to pop to the building shop and get a few more. Don't like to leave a job so close to being finished. So yeah, we'll do that. I'm going to transplant some squash into this bed, which I planted in a place that I thought would be good because I thought they would be getting lots of nutrients in this spot because it's right in front of the wormery which seeps um, worm tea into the soil around there but this spot is not getting enough light and squash like a lot of light um, they're not doing anywhere near as well as another one that I planted later in a much sunnier position so before they get too much bigger I'm going to move them here and they're going to get a lot of sun in this bed you're not going to see any breakfast today because I went out early to take Mauro to the station. He's going to spend a couple of days in the city. And yeah, it was an early start, so no breakfast, just a cup of coffee before we left. And at this point, I'm just going to wait until lunch. <laughs> look so sad you are literally out of the ground for five minutes why are you like this huh i'm gonna plant here instead some things i think are gonna do a little bit better in the shade i've still got a lettuce to plant i don't know why <laughs> i thought i had planted all of these but i'll pop a lettuce in here some chard and a few peppers the peppers that i've got that are in full sun are doing really badly um, I don't know what's wrong with them. The ones I've got in an area that gets a bit more shade are doing better. So I think maybe the key to peppers is sun, but not all day long. So some spicy peppers. And yeah, that's probably enough for this space. Okay, I got hungry. So we've got a bit of a mid-morning snack here. Much like yesterday, this is a sourdough pancake with tomato, uh, lots of rocket and basil, olive oil, salt. The basil and the rocket are from the garden, the rest is not. Welcome to this incredibly messy little corner of the garden where I do my sewing. Um, struggling with shade at the moment, keeping seedlings in the shade, so 
yeah, we're underneath the table <laughs> rather than using it as an actual table. The only other thing I had planned for today with the garden was to sow a few seeds. I realised that I'm not growing many aubergines, which is a shame because aubergine pickle is one of my favourite things. Aubergine anything really. Um, so I do want to have more of those. I also want to sow some green tomatoes because I love making green tomato chutney. I'm going to sow some more of this uh, Mallorca squash because I'm not sure whether the one that I transplanted is going to survive. And some more peppers. I realise I don't have that many. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit late with these. Um, it is the middle of June, but we'll see. Just a little snack of loquat and grapefruit. The grapefruit is not ours, I'm afraid. We do have a grapefruit tree, but it's not producing this year. I think it's too young. Yeah, just something light for lunch, I think, because I'm gonna go on a run later. It looks like it's gonna rain, potentially. It probably won't, but it looks like it might. And the air is kind of cool. There's a bit of a breeze. I think it's a really good day to go on a run. I've just got back from my run. I just made it back before the rain started. It was such a lovely run. I've only just kind of got into running again um, over the last few months since we've had the shower because yeah, without the shower, it just was not very appealing to go for a run and then not be able to shower immediately when I got back. I really wish my phone camera could do justice to just how amazingly beautiful the landscape is around here. I need to figure out how I can, I don't know, maybe take some sort of camera, maybe a GoPro or something like that with me um, on bike rides and runs and really just show you how amazingly beautiful it is around here. I saw some interesting wildflowers, um, lots of beautiful pine forest and I saw, I wanted to show you this, this is a um, aljibe, a proper aljibe. Often I refer to our water deposits as aljibes but actually a proper aljibe is like a covered water deposit and it's placed here on the edge of a slope to catch the runoff from the road, stores it in this stone um, covered construction and then that water can be used for irrigating the fields when necessary. This is how water catchment and harvesting should be done. Everywhere should be doing this, you know, uh, capturing water from roads and places where you don't want surface water, storing it and using it in the summer. It always blows my mind how people figured out exactly where to put these things to capture the water that was running off the hills and the mountainsides where it wasn't being stored. People knew so much, you know, um, and it seems now we're so wasteful with things like that. All the water that just goes down storm gullies and is lost. Anyway, what I'm actually here to tell you about is dinner. I'm going to cook a soup with this pumpkin. This pumpkin is actually from our garden last year. Pumpkins were pretty much the only thing I grew last year because we didn't have water up here and I just wanted to grow pumpkins so the little water that we had I used it for that. This is the last one that I picked and saved. I don't know how it's lasted like nine months. It must have accidentally like cured itself properly. Um, I didn't do anything special with it, I just left it on the side but here we go, it's still good, we're gonna make a soup. Just gonna pick a couple of other things as well, some um, leeks which I don't know if they'll be edible because they're starting to go to seed. I think I sowed these at the complete wrong time of year. Some garlic scapes as well. These are the little flower pods that start sprouting out the middle of garlic leaves before the bulbs are ready. You can just pick them off and add them to a salad or fry them in butter or whatever you want. Um, they taste kind of garlicky and they're really nice. Oh, and I'm just going to thin out a couple of these carrots because we do want a bit of carrot in the soup. Ah, oh, what happened here? Oh, now what are you supposed to do? Should I take out the one next to it? Okay, I wasn't prepared for this. Hey, hey! 
This is the first carrot that I've ever grown. Oh no, this one looked like it could have been good as well. Tiny one. Oh, look. Oh, I'm so happy right now. It looks like a real carrot. And these are supposed to be sweet onions. I don't think they're going to develop much further without um, flowering and going to seed. So again, I think I got the timing wrong on these, but I'll pick them and use what I can. So here it is, the spicy pumpkin soup. I've just come outside to take a picture of it because it's so gloomy inside. And the bread I'm having with the soup is obviously a sourdough pancake as usual. I don't know what's going on with this plate situation or how I'm going to eat this, but I'm sure it will be delicious. Good morning, Toffee. I'm so sorry, it's another pancake for breakfast. This is gonna be very boring. But this time we've got a grated tomato on top. This is one of my favorite ways to eat tomato, just grated, mixed with olive oil, salt, garlic, and in this case, some oregano and basil from the garden. There's actually a kind of tomato which is grown frequently here, which is the best kind of tomato to use for grating or rubbing on bread. It has a really thick skin, so it's really easy to grate out the interior. It's called tomate de colgar or penjar in Valenciano. And I've just realized I haven't opened this seed packet and I'm not growing any of these, so I should probably fix that today. Also, these tomatoes, because they have such a thick skin, actually preserve really well. It says here that they preserve all the way through until the beginning of the next tomato season. Um, and I've heard that from people as well. So this is a really good one to grow, to have tomatoes all the way through the year. I'm not going to do much more in the garden today. I've got some other stuff that I need to do. The only other thing I want to do in the garden today is dig up this potato. My main beds of potatoes aren't ready yet. They flowered and now I'm waiting for the tops to die back a bit like this. Um, and that'll mean they're ready to harvest. This one seeded itself. Um, so I'm going to dig it up and see what's underneath. Not too bad for a volunteer potato. I'll have those for lunch, I think. It's another pancake, this time with Marmite on it. If you don't know what this is, it is a delicious spread which you can put on bread and toasts and sandwiches. It's very popular in the UK and I highly recommend you get some and you try it. I said I wasn't going to do any more in the garden after the afternoon but at about seven o'clock I got another wind of energy so I ended up um, digging a couple of holes and planting a couple of fig trees and then I got a call that our chickens had arrived and I needed to go and collect them so we ordered a few extra chickens from a local shop um, and they'd been delivered. So I then had to go out and get the chickens. When I came back, I still had all the animal related jobs to do. I had the goats to walk. Um, I had the chickens to sort out. 
So it was a bit of a late night. I ended up just eating the leftover potato salad from lunchtime. Um, and today I'm just feeling really like low energy. I'm not really doing anything. Um, I haven't done anything this morning. It is very hot, so that's probably why. Um, this is possibly the hottest day of the year, actually. Let's have a look. Oh no, tomorrow is going to be the hot one, 36. Yeah, it's actually not too hot today. I'm just tired. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, today's just going to be about keeping me cool, keeping the plants cool. Um, later I'm going to go and get Mauro, so I will prepare something for dinner when we get back. What about you, Maudie? Oh, sorry, I woke you up. You found a cool spot under the table. Kitties, what do you think of this heat? Huh? How are you coping, Coffee Bean? Yeah, that's a good idea. What about you, Tofu? Oh, you're all warm. You've just come in from the sun. You've been sunbathing. You're mad. it for this video. I'm just harvesting some of these enormous cabbage leaves to make stuffed cabbage rolls for dinner tonight. I hope you found this video interesting. It's a little bit different to my usual ones. Um, I was going to do a week of eating from our garden but really I think there's only so many rocket salads that you want to see me eat. So yeah just a few days of what we've been doing and eating. Our garden is pretty new. Uh, we're not getting the summer things yet so it's been a bit repetitive but that's what eating seasonally and eating locally is about. It means eating a lot of what there is when it's available in season. I would love to do another one of these videos in a little while when we've got some different things growing so if you liked it and you would like to see something similar in a few months let me know. In the meantime I hope you have a good week and I'll see you next time.